straight up not having a good time right now. Okay, for the first time ever, I'm recording one of these before the last out has recorded, because the Jays are going to lose. I don't know what the final score was. Uh, right now it's 7-1 to one in the ninth inning. I don't care. I just don't want to devote any more of my evening to this game. And I know that there's no clock to run out in baseball, and technically a ninth inning comeback is possible, but this one's over. I'll talk about why that is in a minute, but first let's talk about the good thing. I was really excited about this one going in because Alec Manoa was starting, and he always comes through for me, and he did again for me today. Six innings, one run, a fabulous performance. The only blemish was that Aaron Judge home run on a really ill-timed fastball that I think everyone in the stadium knew was coming. Anyway, other than that, fantastic outing from him. A starting pitcher giving you one run over six innings, that's literally all you can ever ask of a starting pitcher. Uh, he did a phenomenal job. A plus, great job, Alec. I love you, BB. Uh, and we have to talk about the seventh inning uh, because that whole thing uh, was an absolute dumpster fire. First, Bo Bichette with a play not made. It's a hot shot right at him and it bounced on him and that's unfortunate and that's really something he's got to work on. He's had a lot of problems with balls hit directly at him. Uh, where he can't kind of like attack at the ball when he has to kind of be on his heels a little bit. He flubs it a lot. It's an issue. Now, in this case, he recovers pretty well, throws the ball to Vlad at first, who has to stretch a little bit on a wild throw because Bo was rushing the throw. Again, this is not a great situation for Bo. He needs to be able to get that throw more accurately. I understand that they were extenuating circumstances, but man, it's going to happen. You've got to perform better under those circumstances. But somehow, Vlad manages to keep his foot on the bag. It's pretty clear on the broadcast that he gets it's pulled off the bag a little bit, but he has the ball in his glove at the same time that his foot is touching the bag. Except the call on the field is safe, they review it, and the call stands, which means they didn't have enough evidence to overturn, even though it looked like they damn well had enough evidence to overturn. Which leads me to two follow-up questions. One, what is the point of video replay if they're going to be wrong? But that's mostly me being snarky. I understand that nobody's 100%, even with a second look, even with all the cameras, there's going to be some that gets missed. That's just human nature, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm not even really being serious about that. My question is, why do you lose the ability to challenge a call if your previous challenge was unsuccessful? Like, what do the situations have to do with each other? Does that mean that we were right when you questioned us, so you don't get to question us ever again? We're never wrong for the rest of the game. What? Dude, that makes absolutely no sense. This is a fundamental disconnect between two diverging ideas, both of which seem to have merit. The first one is we want pace of play to improve. We want games to go faster because baseball games can really drag, especially with the latest analytical shift towards grinding out at bats, lots of foul balls, lots of home runs, lots of offense. Games can go three, four hours, no problem. So we want to improve pace of play. That's good. That's a good idea. The other idea is that we want the calls on the field to be correct ones. Imagine that. We want to, so much as possible, remove the human element, the human error from the game so that the correct calls are made so that it is the actual players who determine the outcome of games and not officiating. That's a great idea too, but they've tried to combine those two ideas into this unholy Frankenstein's monster that makes not a goddamn bit of sense. If a call is wrong, that's fine. That happens sometime. That's human element. And the team has the opportunity to challenge that. That makes perfect sense because then you take another look at it and you see maybe you're right, maybe you're wrong, but then you adjust the play accordingly or not and move on. But the idea that you lose the ability to challenge because you were wrong about challenging a previous time, that doesn't make any sense at all. It is now a tactical decision whether or not to challenge an incorrect call or not based on how blatantly wrong it was? If the object of the rule is to get the calls right, that's not what happened here. If the object of this rule is to get games to move along faster, that's not what happened here either. Because Simbra struck out one batter, then there's the error at first base that should have been an out, that's two outs. If Culpa had seen that Vladdy did in fact tag Gonzalez, that's three outs and we're out of the inning and the game's moving along faster and all the plays have been done correctly. Instead, we had a super long inning because the Yankees were able to pile on. Instead of being out of the inning, the Blue Jays got scored on three more times, in addition to Gonzalez's run coming in to score. So now, instead of a 3-1, to one, tightly clipped game that's moving along at a good pace where either team can win, we now have an absolute slog fest where the Yankees have an insurmountable lead and the thing's over, but we still have to sit and watch it for an hour. The whole thing is just absolutely asinine. What does the fact that I was incorrect about challenging this call earlier have to do anything to do with this play that's happening now? The two things are just completely unrelated events, and tying them together into some weird kind of gamesmanship, like external little thing that you have to calculate every time, what are the odds that they're going to 
to overturn this? Should we use our challenge in this way? No, the whole thing makes any goddamn sense. Either you're committed to getting the calls right on the field or you're not. And once again, baseball is not at all. There are any number of ways that you can chip away at pace of play. I don't think anyone is sitting around at home thinking, man, you know, the game was going along really, really quickly until they started challenging all these incorrect calls. No, what we want even more than a faster game is a game where all the calls are called correctly. Holy shit, where are your priorities? Oh, the whole thing was absolutely maddening. Uh, and you know what? When I really look at it, the source of my frustration isn't even that inning. That is what the trigger point was for me to start yelling and throwing things. But my frustration is based upon the fact that this team simply cannot hit with runners in scoring position right now, and it's no longer cute. It's really a problem. I have not, at the making of this video, watched the ninth inning, so maybe this gets even worse. Would it surprise you to learn that the Blue Jays hit five doubles in this game? Would it surprise you further to learn that all of those doubles came in different innings? Five different innings. In this game, the Blue Jays had a runner on second base. Many of those times with one or even zero outs. They drove in that runner from second base once on a Bobachette single, a ground ball that just happened to find a hole. It wasn't very hard hit, it was just a ground ball that found a hole. So they got lucky, is what I'm saying. Vlad had multiple doubles in this game. Bo had a double. Kirk and Espinal also both had doubles. And it should be noted that Vlad and Bo are next to each other in the lineup, and Kirk and Espinal are next to each other in the lineup. So you had doubles from these hitters that are right next to each other in the lineup, and they still couldn't score any runs! Small sample size works in the first week. It works in the third week. We're in the sixth week of the season. This is a problem. And this is the team that went down by a fistful of runs on the first game of the season and nobody, and I mean nobody, who had ever watched this team before turned off the TV knowing that a comeback was possible. And they did it. With the Blue Jays, no, I, I just don't see it right now. I know it's going to be better in the future. I know that I, I do feel like they're on the cusp of a breakout. You've got so many guys actually hitting the ball well that eventually just by fluke, they're going to do it in order at some point. But it's so beyond frustrating that this really talented team that's been winning a bunch, that got a great outing from their ace starting pitcher against a divisional opponent at home, and the game was over in the seventh inning because they got their second run. It, literally, as soon as they, the Yankees scored their second run, I kind of said, well, that might be it. The fact that some umpire incompetence allowed them to tack on another six or five runs after that is irrelevant because really the game was over at two to one. And there are plenty of teams that don't have World Series aspirations who would say that's pathetic. I believe in this team. I do. I think they're going to do the thing. I'm making a whole YouTube channel about it. But right now I'm at the point where like this team that I'm committing to watching every single game so I can do a YouTube channel about it. I just didn't want to watch this game anymore. And they're only down six runs. I just didn't want to watch it anymore because it was a foregone conclusion. I've been trying to be really optimistic about these these games, even when we're losing. Because, I mean, even now, this team, assuming that we lose this game, because we did, let's be serious, even now, this team is 15 and 10. You can't write off a team that's 15 and 10. First of all, because only 25 games have been played, but second of all, because they've won most of those games. But this whole idea of we need our pitching staff to be note perfect. We have to expect Jimmy Garcia to never give up a run. Jimmy Garcia gave up one run yesterday, and he took the loss. Simber was the victim of some really bad umpiring in this one, but even had the umpiring been perfect, he would have given up two runs, and that was enough. He's going to take the loss. I made a joke a couple videos about, is it still unsustainable if we're sustaining it? The answer is, and always was, yes, it's unsustainable. Eventually, your pitching staff is going to give up four or five runs in a game for a while. That's just going to happen. You need to have the bats to overcome it, and the Blue Jays do. They're just not acting like it, and it's the scariest kind of thing, too, because everyone was just ice cold. All right, you know what? That happens. Again, hitting is hard. I've made that point many times. Hitting is hard. But they're not. They're hitting. They're getting their hits. I, how do you fix timing? How do you fix trying to get a hit at the same time as other guys? So many innings in this game, I think all but two, the Blue Jays got at least one hit in. And most of those, they got exactly one hit in. There are two I can think of that they did. The one they scored the run, and then the one where Kirk got a single, got picked off at first base, down 7-1, to one, and then Espinal hit a double the next pitch. Like, oh, I wanted to tear my hair out. Like, in that situation, instead of second and third with one out and the top of the lineup coming up, you've got runner on second, two out. Maddening. And this was our best opportunity to get a win in this series, because tomorrow we've got Kikuchi. And... If you're watching these games like I am, I am not hopeful that this Yankees offense, the way they're swinging it right now, won't absolutely wreck 
you say Kikuchi. Which means that because this team can't hit right now, you are staring down the barrel of getting swept at home by the Yankees. <sighs> Nothing gets decided in May. Especially not when you're above 500. Stick around 500, be all right until you get to the all-star break and then see where you are, right? That's conventional baseball wisdom. And indeed, baseball has added a sixth playoff team. It has never been easier to make the playoffs than it is right now. And if you make the playoffs, anything can happen. Lots of world champions have proved that by not being the best team going in and winning the whole thing. Most recently last year, the Braves were, I think, the fifth best team in the playoffs last year, and they won the whole thing. But right now, watching the Blue Jays is work. There's only so many times that I can watch Matt Chapman, Lourdes Gurriel, Alejandro Kirk swing at a 90 mile an hour meatball down the middle of the plate and pop it out of play or pop it weakly to center field to make the mm, just missed it face. I'm sick to bloody death of the just missed it face. And I really hate losing to the Yankees. Like a lot. And we're gonna lose again tomorrow. And I hate it. I hate it a lot. Okay, that's enough. I think I'm negative out for today. I think we're gonna go play some nice soothing video games or anything else now. Uh, thank you very much for watching this channel. Thank you very much for sticking with me through all that for this video. If you did, uh, bless your heart. Uh, I will see you all tomorrow for, well, whatever that's going to be.